Hey guys, it's Sam with Survival Guy Outdoors. Uh, today we are looking at a few easy ways to save weight and cut weight on a backpacking trip. Thanks for watching. Alright, just to talk about what kind of what we've done uh, hiking wise, Paul and I have both done uh, a few hundred miles on the Appalachian Trail. We've done the section from Georgia up to Virginia, and um, hopefully we'll finish the trail or do more in the future. But uh, we're not really we're not ultralight hikers by any means. The ones uh, the tricks I'm about to show you are just kind of things we've tried as a family and they've they've worked out. Um, and so if you're ser really serious about going ultralight, there are a lot more methods that you can use other than these five that we'll give. But the five we're, that, that I'm going to talk about are cutting weight on shelter, um, your sleeping bag and what you're using to sleep with, um, your food, your water, and then tools and accessories. So there's five things that I'm going to talk about. All right, so the first uh, option we have for shelters is this tent. This is a Timber Ridge tent from Bass Pro. Um, they don't sell it anymore, but it's a two-person tent. It has a little vestibule outside like a lot of backpacking tents have, which is kind of nice. Um, but it doesn't come with tons of options, and it's not super light. It's uh, uh, 60 bucks, about 60 bucks, and it's about five or six pounds, which isn't necessarily bad for like a, if you're backpacking for like the first time. But it is kind of heavy if you're if you want to continue it, and you'll definitely feel it in your pack. Um, so I'm gonna talk about some ways to cut down on this. The first way is to use a different type of tent, and I don't really have one of those here, but you can use um, a lot of them. You can get some from REI that are ultra light, like probably two or three pounds. And those are going to cost more like um, more like four hundred dollars, which is you know pretty expensive. Some other options though are, are uh, tents that don't they don't have the poles like you'd see like the uh, aluminum or fiberglass poles. Instead, you just bring your trekking poles like this, and that's the only pole to use to set it up. These tents are a little cheaper; they're probably two or three hundred dollars, so they're a little cheaper than um, a high-end tent, but they're about around the same weight. You can probably get them between one and three pounds. Um, and so the trekking poles. You're probably going to be using these anyway, or you can even use sticks uh, that you just find in the woods when, when you camp. And these aren't, you're not necessarily going to carry these in your pack, you're going to be using them to walk. So it's, it is, it's a different type of weight and it's not really weighing down your pack at all. Another option um, is hammocks. Paul and I have both gotten into hammocks um, and we've been using those for the last two or three years when we've gone backpacking. This is the Eno uh, One Link system. Uh, I've changed some stuff in it to make it lighter. And this is by no means like the lightest system. Right now it weighs about four pounds, but hopefully uh, with, with an ultralight hammock system, you can get it down to two or three pounds. So that's about the same weight as an ultralight tent. And for a lot of people, it's more comfortable and it's more convenient. Um, so it's kind of just personal preference. All right, so I have the original Eno hammock. This is the double nest. Um, so that's another thing. The, the double nest is kind of heavier. You can get the single nest. It's a little lighter. Uh, also for the tarp, I have the um, the Warbonnet Thunderfly. This is a really nice tarp. It weighs about a pound, um, and it's a lot bigger than the Profly that they give you with the Eno One Link. So that's really nice. Um, and then for the bug net, I still have the original bug net. Um, and if you if you get one of the hammocks that has a built-in bug net, uh, you can save a lot of weight because these two together, these are each like a pound. Whereas if you get a combined one, those will weigh you about a pound. So you can save a pound just with that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how you can uh, cut down on your weight for your hammock. And uh, so if, if you want to get rid of this and replace it with something a lot lighter, you can save uh, two or three or even more pounds by using an ultralight tent or by using a hammock system. And it's, um, it works a lot better and it saves a lot of weight in your pack. All right, so the next method I'm going to talk about to save weight is with your sleeping bag or just your sleeping insulation that you're uh, going to you know sleep with, obviously. Uh, so this right here is what I have in my hand is a, uh, a synthetic sleeping bag. So it means it uses synthetic insulation inside. Um, we all started out with these when we started backpacking, our family did I mean. Um, and it's pretty heavy, it's about uh, three and a half pounds, um, which is kind of a lot for a sleeping bag. And you can also see it's, it's pretty big too, it's bulky. Which, um, that's also another thing to consider when you're backpacking is you want it to be light, of course, but it's also nice if it's not very uh, big because it takes less space in your pack. Um, this is also pretty cheap, so as, as I'll go through, you'll, you'll probably notice that the heavier stuff is mostly cheaper and the lighter stuff is more expensive because it's 
uses more premium materials that are lighter. So this is about 50 bucks for one of these sleeping bags. Um, it's pretty cheap. So uh, the first way that you can significantly lighten your sleeping bag is using down. So this is a down sleeping bag. This is the Marmot Cork. Um, it's not completely down. It uses down on most of the body, and then the bottom is synthetic. The benefit of synthetic is it's more water resistant. But um, anyway, so this this one weighs about one pound, a pound and a quarter, a pound and a half around there. Um, so it's a lot lighter, and down also compresses more, as you can see. So this is a lot smaller as well. Uh, let me compare these. So I would say it's probably about half the size of this one, and uh, it takes a lot less space in your pack. So that's nice uh, for a sleeping bag option. Another way to lighten your pack, and uh, a lot of people have started using these, are quilts. So um, these kind of they fold out into a blanket, pretty much, um, and you can you can zip it up so you have like the foot box and everything. But the, the difference between a quilt and a sleeping bag is you don't have a back to it, so you'd just be laying on your pad or in your hammock if you're using that, um, and you don't have a hood on it either. Um, it does save weight. Uh, this is about 18 ounces, so just a little bit over a pound. Uh, it's, it's really nice. I just got this, and I've used it on a few backpacking trips. This is the Enlightened Equipment Revelation. Uh, and you can, the nice thing about quilts as well is you can completely customize them, a lot of, a lot of them, with your colors, your length, your width, everything. Uh, so this has been really nice as well, and no, it's another way to lighten your pack. Uh, and also, the size between these two is about the same, I would say. Um, they can both compress a little bit, too. So that's, that's nice, um, but they're, they're a lot smaller than the original sleeping bag that we used. Alright, the third method I'm going to talk about for um, saving weight and cutting weight in your backpack is with your food. And food is one of the things that really depends on personal preference for what you're going to pack and what you want to eat on your trip as well as how you're going to cook it or if you, if you want to have to cook it, um, if that makes sense. So uh, one thing we usually bring is tortillas. Um, it's, it's kind of a nice thing to, to eat. Uh, we've eaten it for pretty much all meals. It works for a lot of different things. Um, but the problem with tortillas is they're kind of heavy. Uh, it's about a pound. Um, this, this weighs about a pound for just one pack of 10 tortillas. So that kind of can add up if you need several packs or if you have other stuff with it. Um, so that's one thing that's kind of, it kind of weighs down your pack. Another thing we bring a lot of times is tuna. These are kind of smaller packs than what we usually bring. But um, you can put these on your tortilla or just eat them plain. Um, and it's nice to have something like this on the trail. Uh, but again, it's kind of it's kind of heavy. Um, not as, not that heavy, but if you have a lot of these, which you'll probably need for all your different meals, um, it it, weight, it adds up the weight of these packs of tortilla of tor sorry of tuna not tortillas. Um, and also like we've we've brought in big packs of chicken. Those are also really heavy because it has like um, water and juices in them. So that's uh, that really weighs down your pack. All right, so uh, another option for food, sorry, the bugs are really bad, Jeez. Um, is ramen. So this is uh, what a lot of people bring. Uh, they bring ramen, they bring a cup of noodles. Just any dried food is going to save you a lot of weight. Uh, you can also bring the backpacking meals that they have made by Mountain House and those kind of things. And those are, they have some really good ones. We've tried some of them. Um, so I'd recommend those. Uh, of course, this isn't, isn't going to be as healthy as like if you bring like dried fruit or even like tuna or something like that. But as far as like calorie intake goes, um, this has about the same amount of calories as this does. This is three ounces, one pack of this is. Um, and then you can eat both of these to have the same calories as this. Um, these are about, uh, it's about five or six ounces combined with these. And then this is also about the same amount of calories and this is a pound. So you're saving a lot of weight with dried uh, noodles or dried food in general. Um, and it, it's also really good. Uh, so what we've done when we've backpacked is usually mix them with, with different meals. Um, and that's kind of that's kind of a good way to do it. Another uh, negative with ramen is you have to cook it, um, so that's going to be more weight with more water you have to bring, and also um, all your cooking stuff like your stove and your fuel. Whereas the other stuff like the, the you don't have to cook like your tortillas with your tuna, so that's another benefit. All right, guys, the fourth way to lighten your pack is by uh, is with your your water. So there's two ways to do this. First, you can use these iodine tablets, which is what you've used. Um, for basically our entire time we've hiked. It's a great way to purify your water um, because it's, it's, you can see the container is pretty small and it's light and you get a lot of tablets in here so you can purify a lot of different bottles. Um, it's a lot lighter than like a filter, like a bigger pump filter or something like that. Uh, so these work really good. 
Uh, some negatives. First, they don't taste very good at all. I don't really mind the taste, but some people don't, um, you know, wouldn't really like it. Uh, it's definitely a different taste. And also, they take a while to purify. It takes like a half an hour. So, whereas like a filter is instantaneous, these take a while. Um, another way to save weight is, you know, a lot of people carry these Nalgene bottles. Um, and they work well, uh, but the harm is that they are, they're heavy. Uh, you, you know, you wouldn't really notice it carrying these, but if you have like two or three of these, or even like four or five of these, um, you're going to notice it. I think they weigh about six pounds, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you can, you can lighten it a lot by using uh, just your everyday water bottles or even like smart water bottles or Gatorade bottles. Um, I've seen a lot of through hikers who use smart water bottles and we've tried those. Uh, they're a lot lighter. They're, we've used like the leader ones. I don't have one, but I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, and another benefit of those is you can screw on a lot of the filters that people have. Like I have the Sawyer, like the little mini filter. You can screw that right onto a smart water bottle, whereas it doesn't go on to like, it doesn't go on to the cap of one of, one of these. So that's another benefit of smart water bottles. And they also help you save weight with your water. The uh, fifth and final way to save weight in your pack and cut your weight uh, that you're carrying is with your tools and accessories and that kind of stuff. So first up, I'm going to talk about the knives that you're bringing. And a lot of people want to bring a knife because um, you know it's, it's helpful to cut wood if you need it or just use just to do tasks like cutting rope. Um, I'd recommend bringing some type of cutting tool, whether even if it's just like scissors. Um, a lot of people, like, or a lot of through hikers or ultralight backpackers just bring like a razor blade and that can work but um, I prefer to bring more of a heavy duty blade. This is the knife I decided to bring a few years ago. It's, as you can see, it's pretty heavy duty. Uh, this is the K-Bar Becker BK2. Um, I'd really recommend this knife if you're using it for like survival or just, um, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, it's a really nice knife but it weighs like a pound. It's really heavy um, and it's a lot heavy. It's too heavy duty and too, you know, it's just way too much for backpacking. Um, this is my brother's Gerber LMF2. Uh, it's also a really nice knife, but they both weigh um, way too much for backpacking. They're both around, or over a pound actually. Um, and uh, we decided to bring those one year just because um, they were uh, they were new. We, we had just gotten them, but uh, they, they did come in useful cutting firewood, but I would not recommend using them. Uh, I've been carrying recently a Mornive Companion. Uh, you can get these from a lot of, they're, they're pretty widely available from Bass Pro and those kind of stores. They're Swedish, they're made in Sweden. Um, stainless steel blades. They're really nice, Just they're pretty simple uh, knives. And you also have just a, a simple sheath. sheath. Uh, but they're really heavy duty and they're really nice. Um, they also come really sharp. And they weigh four ounces. So they're a lot lighter than a uh, than the throttle knife that I was using, which was not a good idea. <laughs> um, Anyway, so I'd, I would really recommend these for just <laughs> all-around usage. Our old snake bike kit was kind of like a box, probably about like that big. Um, it had like a syringe and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that was for. It was, uh, but yeah, it was a lot bigger. Uh, this is a lot more compact. Um, it works just as well, and it's a lot lighter. So that's another way to save weight. All right, another thing that is important for all backpackers and hikers are uh, the maps. So this is a uh, this is the official Appalachian Trail map for Tennessee and North Carolina. It's got, uh, obviously it tells you like where you're going on the trail. It also has elevation, so that's important for uh, backpackers. And this is the official book for the same section. Um, and it talks about, it basically just explains landmarks, it explains campsites and all that, and water sources. So they're both really useful and we've carried both of these um, every, every year, every hike we've been on. Uh, the book especially is kind of heavy. Um, and so one way to cut weight on the book is just to take pictures of the pages you're going to use. Um, each page covers a few miles, so you, so you can just take pictures on your phone because you'll probably have your phone with you anyway, so that's a way to save weight on that. And then if you need to look at it, just look at your phone. Um, and then on the map, you can do the same, just take pictures of it. Uh, or if, if you think it's worth bringing, you can just bring it. You can also get online Appalachian Trail maps, so that's another way to save weight uh, because you know, you're probably going to have your phone with you Alrighty. So yeah, that's how you save weight on your tools and your accessories and everything. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I hope this will help you lighten your pack. And uh, this is this really isn't only for backpackers. A lot of these, like the tools, the water, the food, they can also apply to any type of just day hiker. So I hope you can use this video and it, it'll help you. Um, if you like this video, um, give us a like, and uh, you can leave a comment. Um, 
and please subscribe for more con uh, content related to this. Like, hopefully we'll, we'll do more backpacking videos and other types of content. Um, and if you want to see any of these specific products that I talked about in a review by themselves, you can uh, comment on that too, and we'll be happy to do that if you want to see that. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys, and tune in next time.